Hi, my friends. Welcome to a new episode of our series, History of the Church. Today, we are going to talk about the Protestant movement, or sometimes called the Reformation. In order to understand the reasons that led to the Protestant movement, we need to return back in time to the Middle Ages in Europe. During the Middle Ages in Europe, the Catholic Church was dominant in West Europe, and without a common government in Europe, the Pope had a great authority and became a very important political leader. In some places as well, the bishops were called the prince bishops as they were both spiritual leaders and provinces governed. This also led to the clergy to become more powerful and sometimes the earthly authority and the spiritual authority overlapped. We also need to know that during the Middle Ages in Europe, most of the normal people couldn't have proper education and also there were no printing facilities, which made a normal peasant to own his own copy of the Bible almost impossible. And the Bibles were only found in the monasteries and were owned by clergy, and they were written in Latin language. Adding to that, that the selling of indulgences as well was common in Europe, and the interpretations of the Bible were only owned by the church. Returning back to the indulgences, it was one of the most corrupt practices in the Catholic Church during the Middle Ages in Europe, and the selling of indulgences was a distinctive feature that granted full or partial remission of the punishment of sin. The granting of indulgences were predicted on two beliefs. First, in the sacrament of confession, it did not suffice to have the guilt of sin forgiven through absolution alone, but also we need to undergo a temporal punishment because we had, a one had offended Almighty God. Second, indulgences also rested on belief on purgatory, a place in the next life where one could continue to cancel the accumulated debts of one's sins. Indulgences began as a way to push people to repent for their sins through good works, but rather than requiring good works, church leaders began selling indulgences, certificates for raising money and collecting money for building uh, basilicas and so on. During this area, people could buy indulgences for themselves or on behalf of, of their deceased relatives. Gradually, some objections started to arise within the Catholic Church against the use of the indulgences, and also encouraging the use of the local languages in uh, prayers instead of Latin. As I said, Latin was the only uh, language used for prayers and also for the Bible. Among those who led these objections was one English theologian named John Wycliffe, who died in the year 1384. John Wycliffe established a movement called the Lollard Movement, and he had also some credit for the first ever Bible translation to English, but he died before the completion of the translation. 43 years after his death, officials dug up his body, burned his remains, and threw the ashes into the River Swift. Another Czech priest called Jan Hus, who died in the year 1415, criticized the corrupt practices, also especially the indulgences within the Catholic Church, and finally he was executed after passing one of the inquisitions and he was burned at the stake because he was considered a heretic in the Catholic Church. Nearly six centuries after his death, Pope John Paul II expressed deep regret for the cruel death inflicted on Huss. A statue of Jan Huss was erected in the Union Cemetery in Bohemia, New York on Long Island by the Czech immigrants in New York in the area of Long Island in the year 1893. John Wycliffe and Jan Huss and others affected greatly the Protestant movement that will start later in the 16th century. By the early 1500s, the Catholic Church was in turmoil because of the controversy of corruption, its unwillingness to adopt the reformers' ideas. In Germany, a Catholic monk named Martin Luther became involved in a serious dispute with the Catholic Church. Later on, this monk will be considered one of the founding fathers of the Protestant movement. Martin Luther was born to 
German Catholic family in the year 1483. As a young boy, uh, Luther was brought up on the Catholic beliefs and he was uh, going to become a lawyer. According to his biography, on his way uh, to the college one day, he was about to die when he was struck by a thunderstorm. Between life and death, Martin Luther prayed and intercessed by Saint Anne, and he vowed that if he was saved, he will continue and he will dedicate his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that actually happened. Martin Luther lived, and later on, in a few years, he would become a Catholic monk after joining the Order of Saint Augustine. After that, a few years later, Luther as well studied theology, and he later would become a Catholic priest. Affected by John Wycliffe and Jan Huss, Martin Luther started to raise his concerns about the corrupt practices in the Catholic Church, again especially with the indulgences. Taking an initiative for the dialogue with the Catholic uh, clergy, on 31st of October in the year 1517, Martin Luther wrote a list of arguments against the church practices called the 95 Theses. He wrote them in Latin so he can debate with the clergy and he put them on the walls of the uh, cathedral in uh, Wittenberg, Germany, where he used to live. Among those 95 theses, we can find Martin Luther saying, God never remits guilt to anyone without at the same time making him humbly submissive to the priest, his representative, which means that at that time, the time in the year 1517, Martin Luther was still in favor of the church sacraments like confession and the authority of the clergy. Luther also is asking a question in his 95 Theses saying, why does not the Pope, whose wealth today is greater than the wealth of richest classes, build the Basilica of St. Peter with his own money rather than with the money of the poor believers? This was also a question in the 95 Theses. So the 95 Theses were quickly distributed throughout Germany and then made their way to Rome. In the year 1518, Luther was summoned to Augsburg, a city in southern Germany, to defend his opinion before imperial assembly. A debate that lasted for three days between him and one of the Catholic cardinals produced, unfortunately, no agreement. On November 9th, in the year 1518 as well, the Pope condemned Luther's writings as conflicting with the teachings of the Catholic Church. One year later, a series of commissions were con convened to examine Luther's teachings, and finally, in the year 1520, Pope Leo X issued a papal public decree that concluded that Luther's propositions is considered heretical and gave Luther 120 days to recount in Rome. Luther, for sure, refused to recount, and on January 3rd, 1521, Pope Leo X excommunicated Martin Luther once and for all from the Catholic Church. In the same year as well, in May 25th, uh, the year 1521, the Holy Roman Emperor, uh, Emperor Charles V, signed an edict against Luther, ordering his writing to be burnt. Luther uh, hid in his hometown and then started to work on one of his greatest projects in his life, for sure, is the translation of the New Testament canon into German, which took him around 10 years to complete. During this project, Luther as well declined to consider some of the Old Testament books which the Orthodox and the Catholic churches of today call the second canonical books. Luther then returned to Wittenberg where his movement initiated by his writings had grown beyond his influence. It was no longer uh, a theological cause of the movement but it became rather political and other leaders stepped up to lead the movement and concurrently the rebellion known as the Peasants' War was making its way across all over Germany. Luther had previously written against the church's adherence to uh, clerical celibacy 
And in the year 1525, he married to a former nun named Catherine of Bora, and he had five children. Turning against the Catholic Church and the use of indulgences to replace the good work, Luther established five rules, five basic rules, based on which all Protestant groups and all Protestant denominations all over the world today can rely on these five rules for their beliefs. Those five beliefs are called the five souls. The first one is sola fede, which means faith alone. So people can be saved alone by faith and uh, good works are no longer important for their salvation. The second one is sola scriptura, which means that by scriptures only people can get the teachings of the church through the Bible and ignoring totally any uh, teachings of the fathers or the traditions or any other authority. The third rule was solus Christus, which means that through Christ alone people can be saved. The fourth sola is sola gratia, which means by grace alone people are saved. And finally, the fifth uh, rule was soli di gloria, which means that glory comes to God alone and no other glory or intercession can be given to any of the saints. At the end of his life, Martin Luther turned strident against the Catholic Church and he pronounced the Pope as the Antichrist and finally Luther died in the year 1546. Now you can see on the screen more references if you want to dig deeper on the topics that we cover today. Thank you for watching. Pray for us. See you next time. Bye.